Hey guys, Mighty Gazelle here. I just finished watching Samurai Jack Season 5, Episode 2. <sighs> Where do I even begin? Uh, right off the bat, this is going to be a spoiler-filled review in continuation of my series that I'm going to be reviewing every episode on the premiere night of when it happens up until the final episode of the season. And I don't... I gotta let it sink in a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it right now. I think that what I just watched might be the greatest single episode of a cartoon that I've ever watched. And I've seen a lot of cartoons. I mean, where do I even begin? Emotionally, it was... No, it was mind-blowing. I was not expecting... I mean, obviously, the, the first episode set the tone of, like, the... Stuff going on in Jack's mind. But man, this one took it to a different level. Like, I at one point had one tear going down my face. And it was the moment when Jack was in the coffin. And he's terrified. You see fear on his face as these people are trying to kill him. And out of all emotions we've seen from Jack, he's usually pretty stoic in his nature. We've never seen, like, raw, like deep fear expressed on him before and it was done beautifully in this episode i cannot i cannot believe that they went this dark there was a point where he contemplated suicide man <sighs> samurai jack you returned to a strong you returned stronger than i could possibly ever have imagined okay so let's just break down this episode shall we this is a review after all um, it starts off with Aku returning, and I was not expecting that. I wasn't expecting to right off the bat to see Aku. Um, this is a new voice actor for him. This is uh, Greg Baldwin, I think his name is. It's the understudy uh, who uh, worked for with Mako for years. He's the best guy to replace Mako if you're going to get anybody, and uh, you can tell it's different. You can definitely hear the differences in the voices. Um, I I don't know what everyone I don't know what the consensus is or what people thought online. I thought it was very respectable. I thought he captured as pos well as you could possibly do for Mako, and I think that he really put his heart into it. You can tr you can tell he's really trying to do Mako justice, and I think he did a great job. I think he did an absolutely great job as uh, Aku for the little bit that we saw. We saw Aku kind of. Uh, in a really funny setting where he's like, he's, he, he wakes up and he puts his eyebrows on and whatnot. I thought that was pretty hilarious. Um, I also really liked the scene where he's having a therapy session with himself and he's confessing that like, he's kind of going crazy too, not as crazy as Jack, but he's going crazy too with the thought of uh, not being able to wait for this guy to die because he's immortal like he's and he's like and he mentioned his he mentions his beard which i thought was really funny he's like all oh, that's changed about him is he's grown that beard <laughs> like i don't know i thought that was pretty great um what else so after that we head to a very cool symbolic um or use of symbolism we have a wolf traveling down and choosing a path and it leading to being ambushed by some giant tiger-looking beasts. And then we cut to Jack, who's also hitting a fork in the road and chooses one path. And what happens to the wolf is a precursor of things that are about to happen to Jack. Because Jack, he beats up his beetle bod, no problem. And he's driving along. And then he gets jumped by the sisters of Aku. Or the children of Aku, whatever they're called. And right off the bat... I words cannot describe how cool it was to see him fight throughout this episode against the I'm gonna call them I'm gonna call them the sisters of Aku because they're all sisters. Um, it was incredible. Every every fight scene was a work of absolute art. The scene where he's running through the rain and he looks behind him and he sees all the sisters running after him. Absolutely beautiful. You, I've never seen a cartoon. I mean, I, a lot of anime don't even look that good. It was incredible. Um, and then uh, the, when Jack like starts like unloading him on the machine gun, and all, one by one, all of his armor and his weapons are getting destroyed. He quickly understands that this is no ordinary fight. Uh, he runs, so he runs to a temple, 
it was a really cool like one thing i want to mention right away um the use of dialogue is very minimal in this episode other than uh the scene where jack's kind of inner older self is talking to him and like putting him like trying to put doubt in his mind and whatnot and the aku scenes other than that it's like no dialogue and i love that i love uh that's one of the things i liked about the original uh series a whole lot was the the lack of dialogue so excellent um so they go to the temple and he's trying to initially hide from them and they search around the whole temple and don't find him and then jack comes out of hiding uh and it's like okay maybe now's my time to escape but nope, uh, these assassins are well-trained. Uh, they they wait for him to come out of hiding, and they chase him down, which leads to a beautiful, absolutely beautiful sequence where he's in this deceased king's like throne room kind of thing, and there's all these coffins lined up in a, kind of a circular fashion, and it's all lit by uh, fireflies on the ceiling. It's, abs- it's beautiful. Uh, the music that plays here, tied with... The emotions you see on Jack's face when he's hiding in the coffin, like he's clenching the sword, it's it's so moving. I, I again, I had a tear going down my face, not because like, not because it's it's a tear. It's not a tear jerking scene. I guess I'm just a nerd, but um, I don't know. I don't like seeing this guy who's part of my childhood fear for his life. You know, uh, it was it was hard, but it was moving at the same time, and it was absolutely fantastic. And then uh, they fight some more, a really cool uh, fight scene. It just shows how badass Jack is if he's able to survive against all these trained assassins. And eventually he runs away and he confronts one one one-on-one. And he headbutts her, breaks the uh, mask, and uh, proceeds to zing right through her throat. Thinking that that she's of course a robot sent by a coup. Little to his surprise when blood starts squirting out the neck and he's like, and then he looks down, the mask breaks off, and it's like a woman, and he's like, just in shock. And then he looks down at his, his uh, stomach, and he's bleeding. And after that, he breaks out the uh, harmonic kind of little blade that he had for when he uh, fought the Scaramouche guy from the first episode. And he's like, ding, 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 and he's just going down. And then he looks at the river and he has the side look, the sad look of like, I, I'm trying to think about what this look represents, whether it's him just being like, I'm ready to die, or it's just, I'm done with the fighting, or he's like, maybe this is it, maybe it's just him accepting that he's potentially going to die here, I don't know, but it was simply fantastic. And he jumps into the river, and then at the very end, you see the wolf. Although it was victorious against its attackers, it died from the battle. And obviously, Jack didn't die from this, even though it, it could be taken that way. But there's eight more episodes. He didn't die. Uh, I guess, right now, that's that concludes my review. Um... I, I'll I'll dive into some like speculation here. It won't take very long. Um, the green sort of samurai that he's been seeing in the past two episodes. I have a, a couple theories on that. If you guys want to hear about them, I'll just say them right now. Um, one, I don't think it is a minion of Aku. I don't think this whatever this is is working for Aku. Um, because if it did, then. Aku would know that Jack has lost his sword because this guy seems to be the one responsible for him losing his sword. Other than that, we don't know anything about this guy um, other than when Jack saw him. Jack has seen him. This is really weird. So in the first episode, Jack sees him and is petrified with fear. But in this episode, when he sees him, he he's like talking to his uh, spirit self and he's like, I can make it, and like I can run toward him. So he wants to go to him at the same time. I don't know. I've uh, more episodes are needed to fully get information on him. So we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I'll be doing a review of every single episode this whole season. Every premiere night, I'll be giving my review slash reaction as to what I thought. I really hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, it's a lot of fun just being a nerd and talking to you guys about what I thought about that current episode. So. Yeah, until next time, this was a Mighty Gazelle, hoping you all have a mighty day. And I can't believe that Jack actually killed someone. Pretty crazy.